Kiki P writes, Am I the only one who sees washi tape and ribbon as two totally different types of embellishment? Tape is flat and adhesive, whilst ribbon is 3D and not sticky. They seem very different, yet they could be used in the same way. Glitter Girl, can you help Kiki P with these totally terrific trims? Of course I can. Today, uh, let's have a look at some ribbon and washi tape ideas, and I'm going to be using the new Basic Gray Paper Cottage collection. And in the collection pack, you get um, 12 double-sided papers plus two sticker sheets. So one sticker sheet of accents and borders with some journaling space, and one with two different alphabets, a light and a dark. They both have upper and lower case. And then the papers look like this. It's a really usable line and really nice colors. Not anything that um, is too intimidating. The patterns are, are quite small, easy to use. Everything in here is, is stuff that, um, that I can see myself using quite quickly and easily. And then um, my three pa favorites I've pulled out for today's layout. So I'm going to be using these three. You can use this pink for the background, which also has this on the back, which I do like because it has little picnics with cupcakes on it, but not quite right for what I want a scrapbook, but this I love. Um, and then these two, you actually get this pattern in both a light and a dark, and I like it in both, um, both versions, uh, but I think I'm going to use this uh, little honeycomb print, and there's also this dot on the back. So I'm going to use these three and put the rest of the papers aside for now. But just wanted to show you those so you can have a quick look. And then I've pulled out some other goodies. I've pulled out the ribbons from the original Amy Tangerine collection, um, which you get a little bit more in the full box. I've already used some, so oh, the full box looks like this. So I've already used the yellow wood grain and the blue polka dot. I'm going to see if I can use those other four. And um, just grabbed a bunch of different washi. I'm not quite sure which ones I'll use, but some aqua, some blue, some red, and some pink. So we'll see what, what ends up best. One of these little bags from Whisker Graphics. And then I've also just emptied the little flags um, from the Basic Gray collection because they're a lot easier to see in a bowl than they are in the packet. So that's where I'm starting and um, we'll see what we can come up with with both ribbon and washi tape. I'll quickly take you through the background layers of this layout. I'm using a single old photo so it's a 3x5 print and I want to make a vertical column that's uh, wide enough for that photo to sit on. So I'm just going to use the photo as a measure and then cut that full box. There. From this box, then I was able to cut everything else and, and build all the shapes around that. So this isn't stuck yet, but I know that this is where it's going to go. And I'm inking everything in brown. I'm going to add bit of a horizontal strip here so that I have something to anchor the page. Acts as a bit of a visual shelf for everything else to sit on. And I've added in um, some paper from the original Amy Tangerine collection, this one that has a brown hand-drawn stripe and then a grid on the other side. And I'm going to use one piece as a journaling box and another piece as, um, as a photo mat. And I'm matting those on this piece. Now I want this to look like a really big mat that's going to go all the way across the page, but really it's two pieces. And I suppose I could have taken even the middle out of that, but didn't think I needed to go quite that extreme. Now what I have is this other piece here, and I want this to go here, and just making sure that that gap's going to be covered. And in fact, I think I'm going to adjust just a little bit. I want this to go lower here so that the horizontal strip comes over. And then I can just use that grid to line it all up. Perfect. So then that means I need to take this piece over here and line it up. I can just follow the pattern because that pink pattern underneath is repeating as well. And then I can add the large paper block 
on top of that and it should cover up all the gaps. And I have my photo mat. It's smaller than the width of this large paper box, but it is um, larger than the photo, just. So then the photo can go on top here. So there's my basic format of where I'm going to start. I have room to write, I have room for a title, and I have plenty of space for embellishment. So next I need to figure out where I want to use my washi tape and my ribbon. Because the washi tape is flat, I'm going to start there, but I also know that I want to use it in probably three places. I tend to find three spots on the layout where I can add the washi tape and then add more embellishment on top of that. But sometimes that means I need to find where that embellishment is going to go. And I want to use a little grouping of flags, but I kind of want them up high rather than right near the photo so that I can extend the design up to the top of the page. Um, but if I place them just here on their own, there's this big gap that doesn't really connect from the embellishment to the photo. So what I'd like to do is add another element in here. And there's a sticker that's um, pretty general. There's no theme to it with this one. So I'm thinking that this could bridge this gap here and then I could pull in some red to pull in the red color that's here and there's a bit of it in this flag and just a word on the coloring I know I'm gonna mix pink and red I'm also gonna mix kind of blue and aqua and and that's partly in response to this photograph because in the picture nothing matches we're wearing blue leotards with purple and red skirts or green and purple skirts pink tights the whole thing is just a kind of an assault of color that doesn't really go together. So I'm being a little bit um, more lenient with what colors I'm putting together than I normally would. But red and pink can work together really well if, um, if used in the right tones and balance, so it's worth a look. Now I don't want to put this um, sticker on top of the photo, but I want it to bridge that gap. So I'm going to put this on some pop dots so that I don't have any adhesive touching this picture because it's an older image. I did take a digital backup, but um, I, I just, I don't know, this one is, is truly the only photo I have from that day. So I'm just going to give it that little bit of extra protection by not putting the sticker right on top of the picture. This also means that I can move it around because I haven't taken the it, the paper off the um, pop dots. I can move it around and get all the placement for this little grouping of embellishments right before I have to start sticking because I want the washi tape to be flat to the page so this needs to go underneath but if I was using that whole sticker and it was already stuck I'd be in a bit of a jam. So I can see from here I want these flags to fit here and I'm going to use the washi tape to actually stick them to the page but I also am going to add a little bit of adhesive to the paper flags themselves so they won't move and um, since the adhesive or since the tapes gonna go over those little toothpicks and that might not be the most secure thing ever so I can take this out of the way now This washi tape is one that comes in a set of three from my mind's eye in the Indie Chic collection. It's a really nice red. And from there, I can build this. So I'm not using um, the washi tape like a ribbon at all in this case. It's very flat to the page, and it's giving me a bit of a splash of color and a horizontal line, but it's also keeping things in place. Before I went any further with the embellishment though, I wanted to make sure that I went ahead and put my journaling in that box so that I didn't cover it up and not end up with enough room for what I wanted to say. I will say that I used a brown pen on top of the brown and white grid paper and from a distance it's not easy to read. It's probably not even easy to read up close but it is possible to read up close and um, but I didn't have any other I didn't have black on the layout and so I decided I would go with the brown pen and um, just something you might want to and make a call on a judgment call as to whether you like it to be really legible or whether you're okay with somebody having to look at it properly. Okay, um, from there I wanted to also add my title. And for that, I'm going to use the chipboard um, that comes in the, the chipboard letters that come in the Paper Cottage uh, chipboard set. So you get two 
pages of letters and then two pages of embellishments. So I'm going to start um, from this space and work backwards and then I'm thinking that this needs a little bit more embellishment here and there'll be a bit more embellishment here and in both those cases I want to use the ribbon to try something different than just the flat placement of the washi tape. When it comes to the ribbon, I can start to add things with more dimension and texture because I don't have to just have that option of putting uh, the like with the tape where it's flat to the page. Um, it's not adhesive, so if I want to use it flat like this, I can just put adhesive on the back and use it in strips. Um, but if I want to make a difference between the tape and the ribbon, then I'm looking for ways to add texture and do things that are not as easy to do with a tape, like tie into bows and knots. So I just started looking for places where that could work. I replaced the string in the tag, and this just has a little bit more journaling that I didn't particularly want on show, hidden in this little bag here and then added some ribbon just tied around there and then a paper clip and um, a, I tied a little bit around the stick that was already there. I'm going to do another paper clip to put on this side of the journaling box and all I do for that is to make a loop and feed that loop through the end of the paper clip and pull to make that knot. And then you can see which side you like better. And like this with a pattern ribbon, you can pull it around. Now you are going to get one side up and one side down, but on a basic shape like a heart, that's okay. It'll still work and people will still know what it is. And then just find the spot that's good for attaching it. And then come in here to make the ends fit and you may plan a little bit better and not have to cut off quite so much of that ribbon. There we go. There's all sorts of other things you can do with ribbon. One of my favorite techniques lately is um, to take the ribbon and say I wanted to add a border strip here, which I don't, but say if I did, and place your ribbon down but don't adhere it and use your paper piercer or a needle to punch a set of holes on one side so that I have stitching holes on one side of the ribbon. But then move the ribbon over just ever so slightly so that my holes are covered up. Then come back to the other side and do the same thing. Now put holes on this side of the ribbon. Then you put your ribbon in between and you stitch, but the, the stitches will be just ever so slightly too close together, which will make the ribbon pucker up and with every loop. And you just leave the thread on top, so you're stitching, you're stitching over the top of the, of the ribbon, and it'll end up dimensional because you'll have this little pucker that's made from the holes being just slightly narrower than the ribbon. And unfortunately, that didn't work out in a place where it was going to work well on this layout, so I just thought I'd pass that along even though I didn't get a chance to put it on this page. At this point, I'm looking for um, one embellishment to go here. There are some rosettes in this collection, and as I was just doing that, I thought, wait, I am looking for something circular, so let's have a look at these and see if there's one. This one is too big. <laughs> um, that one is slightly too small. This one might be just right. It's like Goldilocks. Okay, so what does this one say? It says sweet surprise, so I might just change out that top piece. I'll add some shading to the edge just so it matches everything else. And size-wise, that's a really good match. So just take off that top layer and replace it with something that's um, going to be a better match to the wording of the page. And then the last little thing I want to do is take some little something small. So I'm thinking maybe I could sprinkle some tiny red buttons or pearls around here and through here just to pull all that um, multicolored embellishment together. Here's everything all finished off and I just added some brown pearls from the Pebbles Candy Dots to finish that off and pull all the embellishment together. And just to go back and, and make a little note, at the beginning where I placed all the washi tape, I said that these would be the three areas of embellishment. But this week, especially in contrast to last week, I didn't add anything else on top of this until I got to the pearls because there ended up being quite a lot of embellishment up here. The photo's quite small, there's a lot of writing, so it didn't really need a lot more here. But if you wanted a more embellished style, there's definitely room where you could 
and build on top of the tape there as well. Now your challenge this week is to use ribbon and washi tape on the same layout if you have both. If you don't have both in your collection then we'll let you cheat a little bit and use whatever you do have. But if you have both, try using both on one layout so that you can experience both the flat and the dimensional aspects in the same thing. Um, and one little quest that we're on this week. If you search the internet for scrapbooking ideas with ribbon. Right now you'll find a lot more ideas for storing your ribbon than for using it. So this week I hope that you'll join me in this little quest to fill the internet with a few more examples of actually using the ribbon that we collect rather than just finding pretty ways to store it in our uh, craft supplies. Although it is really pretty but it would be lovely to see it all used on your layouts. So take that little bit this week and uh, go ahead and cut up some ribbon and get it on a page. Thanks for watching! Join us next week for the continuing adventures of Glitter Girl and the ongoing mystery of the scrapbooker behind the mask at twopeasinabucket.com.